from Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Hi, this is Evangelist Tammy Laster, and coming up next is my show, Not On My Watch, right here on Worship Center Radio. This is Evangelist Tammy Laster, and I am glad that you are tuned in tonight to my show, Not On My Watch. You are listening in to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions, and Detroit's number one station for the gospel. Um, I have again tonight, and I am so excited once again to have my brother, Minister David Laster, join me on tonight. And we will be tonight discussing again the topic of... The manifestations of pride, the sin of pride, and but before we do, well, let's have an, a, a word of prayer before we get into the program. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you and we adore you. Father, we worship you. Lord, we thank you that you are God and you are God all alone. There is no other God beside thee. And Lord, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for your pre the pre precious blood of your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for his shed blood for us on Calvary, Father God. We thank you in the name of Jesus for your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you to have your way on tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you speak through your ministers on tonight, Father God. Father, I pray that you touch the ears of the people who are listening on tonight, Lord God. Touch their ears, touch their hearts, Father God. Father, anoint them to receive the word that you will have me instruct on tonight, Father God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We count it a privilege, Lord God, that you allowed all of us that are listening, all of us that are tuned in, Father, to be able, Lord God, to just wake up and see another day. And we don't take it for granted, Father God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare, oh God, every assignment, every tactic, every contract that the enemy is sending against the people of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cancel those contracts right now in Jesus' name. Satan, you are defeated. You, are, you have no victory in the lives of God's people in the name of Jesus. Father, I I thank you right now in Jesus name, Lord God, bless this station, Lord God, bless Lord God, beyond measure, worship center radio, Lord God, expand their borders like never before, Lord God. Touch each and every individual, Lord God, uh, that is a part of this ministry, Lord God. Bless their hands, Father God. Bless their minds, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. And we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise belongs to you. In Jesus' Amen. majestic name. Yes, Amen. Amen. Brother Amen. David, Amen. how are you? I am doing fabulous by the grace of God. Amen. Hey man, I'm doing wonderful. I am doing wonderful. Um, I'm I'm just truly humbled, you know, uh, what God is doing in my life right now, and I don't take any of it for granted, you know. Uh, God, He says in His Word that He orders our steps, and but the Amen. thing the thing about Him ordering our steps when He orders us, we we must be willing to move when He orders us, and I've come to that place in my life that. You know, no matter what, at all costs, as he orders me, I will follow. So I, I am gracious to God that I'm on this station. And um, I believe God is doing something for you, too, opening up some avenues and doors for you as well. Amen. 
Amen. Yes, he is. He is a wonderful God. I, I love to hear when the saints of God say they are doing wonderful because it yes. definitely describes the kind of God that we serve. Exactly. He is a, he's some type of wonder for sure. That's and right. We just thank God for opening doors, for the opportunities, yeah. opportunities that the goodness of God will go forth. Amen. Therefore, lives can be changed. Amen. And Amen. we just thank God for all opportunities because he's that type of God. Yes, he is. And one thing about when he opens doors, no man can shut them. No man can shut Amen. the doors that God opens for our lives. And we, we talked a little bit this morning, and we both said that what God has ordained, no man can stop. Amen. That's right. <laughs> no man can stop what God has already ordained. Amen. 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 Okay, let's get into the program. I, uh, it's on the, the manifestations of pride. How do you know that you're walking in the spirit of pride? How do you know that 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 spirit is dwelling on the inside of you. And last week I um, touched on a couple of the uh, signs or manifestations. How do you know that when you're walking or that spirit is in you? And I'm going to go through some of the things the Lord gave me. And uh, he gave me a few more this morning. So I'm just going to kind of reiterate some of the uh, manifestations of you know, the spirit of pride. And uh, one is the comparisons and competition, how we get into competition with one another in the body of Christ. You know, uh, uh, especially I've seen it amongst leaders uh, when they begin to compare the size of their church to another ministry. And that's not evident that, I mean, you could have a mega ministry, but that doesn't mean that God is dwelling in that ministry. Amen. Uh, it, could, it could be a ministry of just two people and God be dwelling in there in the spirit of God be pr ever present more in, amongst two people, amongst 50 people than 10,000 people, you know. So that's uh, one, of, one of the manifestations when, uh, when uh, people get into com competition with one another. Uh, another one is uh, if you're the type of person that you think you're better than someone else or you see yourself better as someone else, that's that's a manifestation of the spirit of pride. Another one is when you um, you seek uh, to control or you want to be independent of other people. You know, you don't want to submit to authority. Uh, and, and we all must submit to someone. And, you know, if you have a problem submitting to it, uh, authority, you know, those over you, then uh, the spirit of pride is, is on the inside of you. Yes, um, and uh, you, we, you have the type of person that want to, you know, they talk too much, but don't want to listen to uh, what others have to say. They, they feel like what they have to say is more important than what anyone else has to say. So those are just some of the uh, manifestations that uh, I talked about last week. Um, stubbornness, that's, that's a manifestation of the spirit of pride. Um, I said see, seeing yourself better than others. That, those, so those are some of the things how, of how you can identify and know that the spirit of pride is on the inside of you or that you're walking in that spirit. But tonight what I want to talk about is pride and beauty and how it becomes a snare to an individual. So uh, let's talk, I'm going to talk about that for a minute. Um, God has given us a role model. He has, give, he has given us a model to follow, and we know that that model is Jesus Christ. He was a man of humility. There was no, per, no trace of pride in Jesus. He was a man of humility. And more than anything, we must first want to glorify God in our lives and realize that it is only in becoming Christ-like that will help us to be able to glorify God in our lives, being Christ-like. And Christ was a man of humility. He was not a man uh, full of pride. And, and like I said, in order to glorify God with our lives, we must become Christ-like, who was a man of humility. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it was the humility of Christ that was such an awesome attribute that he possessed. It was his humility. And I know, and you, you and I both know, you know, reading the Bible and some of the, the stories and parables and all of that, 
we know there were some times when Jesus was faced with certain things where I'm sure he wanted to say some things and lash out, but because of the spirit of humility that he walked in and the wisdom that he walked in, it, it kept him to be the person that God ordained him to be, to be. And that was being, you know, Christ-like and, um, the sin of pride is the most detestable attribute to God. God, God says he hates the spirit of pride. He hates that. Uh, we, we know what happened to Lucifer in the Bible when he became puffed up and full of that spirit. You know, we, we, know, we know what happened to him and a third of the angels that, you know, went along with him. And, uh, the, and God, he, he really detests that spirit and um you want to reiterate or talk you know contribute to what you know i just said you know one one thing i learned about pride i think we as we as men and women of god sometimes we got to understand that pride is very vast it's not something small exactly. it's not something that just just one one sort of way of having pride mm -hmm. i've learned in my own personal experiences because yes. i was one who definitely walked in the spirit of pride for mm -hmm. a long, long time, for, yes. and I'm talking about from from having money, from just yes. positioning in life, and things of that attribute. But I also learned that sometimes we can have a spirit of pride when we walk, when it comes to not doing something the way God wants us to do, wants us yes. to have it be done. Yes. You know. Yes. I mean, we 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 kind of we you know if we as believers really truly and understand and believe that God orders our steps. Yes, amen. So when, when God God gives us a word to walk in, we have to walk in that word. Amen. No matter what what it may seem like or what we don't want to do or we think that we too much to do it. And that's what happens when you have that spirit of pride as well. Yes. You know, but like you said, uh, Paul says it best, clothe ourselves in a, in a, in a form of humility like yes. Christ who was humble in himself. And, and when you look at that, that's where you know that you became more like Christ yes. because you would not have, you would not, you, it's like you don't even care what everybody else is saying yes. because you know Amen. you're only doing it for the will of God because Amen. it is the will of God for your life. Amen. And I think that that's the biggest problem that, that I have, I, me, my personal self is like, I went through some trials and tribulations where I, I had to understand that everything that God ordered me to do, it was because of his glory. Yes. It wasn't about me no more. Amen. You know, and I think I always say that's the biggest struggle is not even a struggle of, of thinking that I'm better than somebody else because I, I know my confidence is only rest in God himself. Amen. You know, at one time. Like I said before, I know a buddy of mine used to always tell me, he said, uh, Brother Laster, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. Amen. He said a lot of people kind of get you misconstrued because they, they'll think that you're arrogant, but mm -hmm. they just don't know you have come to a place where yes. your confidence is totally in God. Amen. Yes. You know? Yes. You know, yes. And he, even as we had talked just briefly this morning, I was just sharing with you, some of the situations I, that was brought upon me where it was just a lot of ridicule that kind of went forth. But, you know, the only thing I, I stood and I told the individual, I said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yes. And every tongue that rises against me, I shall condemn. Mm -hmm. Because I just know that God will turn what, what man meant for evil and God will turn it into something good. Amen. You know, Amen. and a lot of first thing they say is I'm prideful. That's pride. That sound like your ego talking. I said, no, it's not my ego. It's mm -hmm. just knowing I, I can trust in a God that loves me enough, cares about me enough to make sure mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm equipped and that I'm prepared for whatever comes my way. So I just learned to yes. truly trust in God when it comes to that type of thing. That's it. it. That's it. And you know, when you trust in God, there's a beauty and a confidence that comes with that. You know, that when you know that you trust in him, and without a doubt, there's a confidence that comes with that. And, right. it, and it changes your inner man because, you know, whatever is going on on the outside, your trust is in God. Right. And, and you know, like you said, a lot of people might, you know, they, they misconstrue it and think it, it's pride or arrogance. And it's not that at all, but it's confidence and in that confident in knowing who you are in who God. Who you are. That's, that's it. Right. That's it. Because I've experienced it, that myself, you know. Um, I just know who I am and whose I am. 
That, right. That's that's just it. You know, the, the not pride. I I had pride. I I I gave a testimony last week about you know when I was walking in that spirit and how God stripped me of it pretty much everything. And uh, but I had to come to the place of you know embracing and knowing what true humility in Christ was, and that's that's what how God dealt with me. He had to strip me in order for me to, you know, first learn to trust him and not put my, my trust even in myself, you know, <laughs> or or anyone else. He had to tr- he had to strip me and 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 let me know I'm God, not you and anyone else. Right. I am God. You say you're my child, you serve me, let me show you that I am the God of your life. So, uh I gave that testimony last week um how God, you know, stripped me of that. But I am confident. I am confident in the in the very thing that I know, and that is my trust is in Him, and I know I belong to Him. And right. um, uh, let me let me uh, get to uh, one of the scriptures that uh, he was. Uh, I was meditating on this weekend, and um, I was I thought I was going to go a different way, but you know how God will change you up, right? <laughs> Um, right, right, right. He, he wanted to talk me to talk about uh, beauty, how people become prideful in with their beauty, their looks, uh, their gifts, their talents. Um, in Ezekiel 28, verse 17, uh, points out how Satan uh, got caught up in his own beauty. And, it, oh, and his accomplishments, and and because we know he was one of the most beautiful angels, he had every instrument built in inside of him. He he made beautiful music, but he got caught up in all of that. He got caught up in his gifts, his talents, and his looks. And Ezekiel twenty eight verse seventeen uh, says, "Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty." Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Now, we see what happens when we get caught up in ourselves. We see exactly what what happened with Satan when he got caught up in his cell. God said, I will cast thee to the ground. In other words, there's a fall. There will come a fall. You will, you know, there will be a downfall in your life. Don't get so caught up in yourself, you know, that you become so prideful and you think, you know, you're untouchable, you're unteachable, you know, no one can compare to you and God wants us you know there are a lot of beautiful people in the world there are a lot of gifted and talented people in the world but we have to be careful not to get caught up in the gifts and the looks amen amen, amen. you know the world we, uh-huh go ahead even when we think about that we look at and I know you, you spoke about the story of Nebuchadnezzar he was yes. one who actually came to a place where he thought everything that he had came from his own hand, exactly. his own handiwork, yes. his wisdom. Yes. You know, and that, that, that's the dangers of, of a lot of men and women of God that's in ministry or just the gifted, those who are gifted. We don't just see it in, in the body of Christ, but we also can see it in just everyday life in sports because we have people that know they're gifted, but because of that gift, they think they, the gift came from themselves. And not understanding that that God created them and yes. enabled them to have that gift. Amen. Amen. For His purpose. Amen. For His purpose, though. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It, it says for His purpose and His pleasure. Yes. So, yes. So, so when we come to that place, it's like we get away from what Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, said, has said. Do not forget. When he constantly told the children of Israel, Moses told the children of Israel, do not forget, yes. for it is God who, who yes. gave you the power to gain wealth. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 It, it is God who gave you God. the power to gain wealth. Amen. You know, and, and that's, like you said, it's definitely, it's nothing but ego speaks when we come to mm-hmm. that place where, where, and not understanding the Bible clearly tells us that promotion cometh from the Lord. From the Lord. Yes, that's right. That's right. 
It comes from the Lord. And I, we talked earlier and I mentioned to you, you know, even when Joshua was promoted, God raised him up. And there's a difference right. when a man raises you up and when God raises you up. There, there is a difference, you know. You got men that appoint you to leadership and then God raises you up. And when God does it, you know, everybody wants to put their mouth on it and talk about it and say, well, where did this person come from? Who is he? Who does he think he is? And that's how you can tell when God does it, you know, because then you got all the lip service that comes with it, you know. That where, where does she come from? Who is she? Well, what are her credentials? You know, that that's that's when God raises somebody up. But man, you know, when when man appoints and when man raises up, it it, it I've seen this happen over and over and over. It it come it comes to an end. But when God does it, it 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 is it's done. It's done. It's a done deal. Amen. 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 <laughs> Definitely, definitely that. I mean, we like you said, we see it constantly because when when the anointing is on you, because I believe when Amen. God appoints, God anoints. Yes, yes, yes. God would not anoint some. Uh, he would not anoint something that He's not going to appoint. That's right. So you have to. I, and I, I I say that to say it this way: when a person is anointed, they don't become weary as much. They won't become yes. weary yes. in the assignment. Yeah, we easily can we easily can become weary in assignment because we don't have the anointing to carry us yes. through that assignment. Ah, glory. Say that again. Ah, glory. Yeah. You know, Jesus. we must come to a place where we ha we walk in the anointing that God has blessed us and gifted us with rather yes. than trying to walk in something that man is trying to put us yes. in. I mean, we I, I think we see the perfect story when we think about King David mm -hmm. and, and when when Samuel came to David's house. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to actually show the father that David was going to be the next king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, remember, he went through seven other brothers before yes. he realized that David was the one. Exactly. Yes. And we saw actually when the battle of Goliath took place, before the battle took place, we saw that the oldest brother actually challenged David. Mm -hmm. That's right. About that assignment. That's right. That's right. You know, then, uh, then with that, it just parallels to what you said. When you know the anointing is on you or the assignment is for you, you're definitely going to get what they say in modern day today, haters. Haters, that's right. That's right. Haters are that's going right. to come. But those haters really are showing you a sign that, guess what, This is you on the right track. Yes, yes, absolutely. You are on the right track. Absolutely. So really, I, I always say it this way. We kind of need the haters to let us know yes. that we are on the right track. That's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, the world is seeking all kind of beauty today. We're living in an age where, you know, everybody wants to be beautiful you know you got all types of plastic surgery you know this that diet shakes all kinds of stuff you know and we're in a age where now you can't tell a man from a woman or a woman from from a man you can't tell if a man used to be a woman or if a woman used to be a man you know that everyone this beauty thing has people so you know confused and and, and messed up uh, we got beauty aids, we got makeup, you know, clothes, cars, houses, all of that, you know, that, and the world is seeking these type of things, you know, and these things themselves are not evil, but it's the lust of them that is, you know, the Bible says in 1 John 2, 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's not of the father, but it is of the world. So Satan's unusual beauty, you know, he was so beautiful. It was his unusual beauty that caused his destruction because he became prideful. He became caught up in himself and his, you know, how, how good he looked. And it contributed to the excessive development of his pride he, because he was so caught up in self. And, you know, natural and spiritual beauty can be a trap. It could be a deadly trap for us. Uh, Romans um, 12, 23 says that we are not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. You know, it. Uh, I've seen, you know, individuals that, you know, they're, they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, um, they're gifted, they're talented, and they begin to think that 
they're just, you know, high up on this pedestal. You know, they even be, get to the place of idolizing themselves. And God said, you, we are not to think that we are so high. You know, we are not to think so highly of ourselves than we ought to. They say, also said, let a ma another man praise you with his own lips, not your own lips. You know, let somebody else praise you. Let somebody else uh, compliment you. So we have to be careful, you know, with that. Um, but God blesses uh, uh, different people with different gifts, you know. He He graces us, but rather, you know, some people can take those same gifts and become prideful with those gifts, you know. And a, a person could be so gifted to the point where they get to where they can't even handle it because they... um you know, they, can, they can't handle it because they're too prideful and they're not humble with, with those gifts. So uh, we got to be careful even with the gifts and the talents that, you know, God gives us. God gives us gifts and talents and even beauty to glorify him. You know, all of it is for the glory of God. It's not for our own glory. It's for his glory. It's for his glory. And you know, Jeremiah, and Jeremiah, I love Jeremiah 9, 23. That's one of my favorite scriptures. It says, this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom. Or the strong right. boast of their strength. Or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one that boast, boast about this. That they right. have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. He didn't say he delighted in pride. He didn't say he delighted in self-righteousness. He said, don't boast in those things. Boast in this alone. And that is that you know me. You know, basically, you know me to be the Lord, not not you and not anyone else. Boast in that. Don't boast in, you know, what you what you have and what you know, what you're gifted at. Boast in that. that it said the Lord said. The Lord said. Boast in this. And a person can be so come so haughty and lifted up with their gifts that they refuse to give their gifts back to God because they love being seen exhibiting the gifts. They love using them to manipulate others. They love using their gifts to entertain. And, and, and they refuse to give the gifts that God has given them, whether it's the gift of beauty, the gift of singing, the gift of dance, you know, the gifts and the talents that God gives us, you know, we have to be careful that we don't become so haughty and caught up in those gifts that come from God. Amen. Amen. And, and, well, I, 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 and I believe, I go, I, I'm sorry, go ahead, brother. I, I, I actually go back to just, 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 and I, I'll just, I'm going to kind of uh, boast for you right now, if you don't mind. But I'll, <laughs> I'll just go back to if one had, had an opportunity as a child to really boast upon themselves and allow the spirit of pride to take, go forth, especially when it came to beauty. All your life you have been, you've heard it your whole life, how beautiful you are, how beautiful you are, as, as yes. we were kids growing up. Yeah. I mean, to be Miss Black Joliet, Miss Black Illinois, I can imagine just all the wolves, I'm going to call them, coming towards you yeah. during those times where <laughs> where where you if anyone had a right to to carry that to, to act like that i believe that you you had a right to do that because of the way that god fearfully and wonderfully made you but you had made a conscious decision to know that you can't god made you that way for a purpose yes. and i think that's the biggest problem is it's coming to that having a kingdom mentality I always that's say. it yeah having a kingdom mentality because the bible clearly tells us in romans 12 and 2 be no longer conformed to the things of this world but be transformed by the re yes. renewing of your mind yes and it, and I, I said it that I said it that way to say it this, say it like this. It's like only a person that continuously focuses on thinking like the world thinks. Mm. 
Yes. We'll walk in that spirit of pride. We'll yes. already come to the place where they getting all they want all the credit for who they are today. Yes. Rather than giving the glory and the honor to God who yes. created them. That's right. Yes. You know, yes. The Bible says the Bible says he turned ashes into beauty. Yeah, glory. Yes. He turned yes. ashes into beauty. My God. Yes. Yes. He turned ashes into beauty. Ooh, not Jesus. Us. Ooh, glory. And who can do that? Ooh, Jesus. No, nobody, nobody God. but God. Ooh, I mean, I know Jesus. the women love their MAG makeup. That don't turn nothing into nothing. Yes. <laughs> MAG yes. don't get the credit for that. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll take Ooh. you even deeper because I'm a, I'm a forward thinker, as you know, and I'm a yes. deep thinker. I always say MAC products didn't come just because somebody had an idea to put it on your face. God created MAC products yes. for a purpose. Yes. <laughs> glory. <laughs> so why do I give God the glory even if you got to wear MAC on your face? Absolutely. That, yes. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Glory. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I just <laughs> believe that we, we as a people, we have to come to a place where we just quit being conforming to the things of this world as men and women of God. We have to continuously renew our mind, not get caught up in the cliches, not get caught up in what the world is doing. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do I do believe and know that it's, it's a lot of humble men and women of God serving yes. God, and they understand that everything that they have, have mm -hmm. comes from God. Comes from God. Amen. Amen. Because we know that we, the Bible clearly tells us God withhold us nothing good for those mm -hmm. who love him. That's you right. You know what I mean? So we know, we know the blessings of God will overtake us. We know all of these things. But we must be, be mindful that we never forget who, they, who gave them to who us. Who gave them to and us. And where they come from. That's right. That's right. That's right. And but, we, we but, have to surrender those gifts to the Lord for his use and for his glory. And, you know, when you're... Uh, the different gifts that God gives us, uh, if you refuse to surrender those gifts, and I've seen this happen, the Holy Spirit will eventually depart. You hear what I'm saying? And, right, and right. Then, and then Satan, you know, he has his part in that. And the change could be so subtle that the person doesn't even recognize Satan's takeover of their gifts. And they're supposed right. the gifts are supposed to be used, you know, to glorify the kingdom of God. Um, the big difference that you know, with uh, let me just say, when the gifts, when you when your gifts take a turn like that, when you when you don't allow God to use your gifts for His kingdom, the gifts. This is what the Lord it gave me. He said they no longer stress your fellowship with the Lord. Nor do, do those gifts cause souls to repent. Or right. nor does though nor do those gifts stimulate the joy and the peace in the Lord. There's no anointing anymore when when exactly. when those gifts become contaminated and polluted, you know, from the spirit of pride. The, the you know, the anointing goes. And 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 I've seen in the body of Christ today, people are confusing the anointing. Uh, you know, you got people get up and sing, you know, sing in the choir, can sing a, a good tune, you know, do runs. But there's no anointing on the gift because they now because they're so full of pride that now what they want to do instead of glorifying God, they're entertaining the people. Yes. And that's why there's yes. no revival in the church, because now people are just being entertained and then they're going home behind closed doors and still living in defeat, still living in bondage, because all they did was went to service that day and heard a good song with a lot of runs with no anointing that, you know, that destroys the yoke. The Bible says it's the anointing. That destroys the yoke of bondage. Not the entertainment. It's the anointing. Not the runs that you can sing. It's the anointing that destroys Amen. the yoke. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I see it week Amen. after week. You know, good gifts and no anointing. What happened to the anointing? You let the spirit of pride come in, puff you up, and, and now you're haughty because you're a praise and worship leader or because, you know, you can preach a good sermon. But there's no anointing. People are still, you know, 
half dead in the church. There's no revival. People need to, re they need to be revived. They need to be resuscitated. And people are going home and still dealing with depression, you know, suicide, those things. I don't, don't tickle my ear. Give me a word. No. Give me the anointing that, you know, if I'm going through something, that anointing can break the yoke off of me. I, I don't want to be entertained. You know, yeah. I, I, I was sitting at my desk today and, and I heard the Lord say the church has become a circus. It has become a circus. You know, you got the ringmaster, you got the, the magician, you got the trapeze walker, you know, all entertainment. All entertainment. You got the juggler, you know, people coming to the circus, being entertained, and going home and still dealing with issues. No anointing. Oh, That's glory, right. Jesus. I, I, I think a lot of the dangers of that oh. is because the anointing is no longer, no, no longer residing, I believe, because a lot of the times that the men and women of God that's serving or, yes. or what you would call entertaining, they no longer in communion with God. That's right. They're no, that's right. they're not studying like they used to. Yes. You know, they, they, and, and to me, that's the biggest problem that that's hurting the body. I mean, even the worship leaders, they're there just to fulfill worship. Yes. But they're not doing it. They're not spending time in the presence of God. Yes. Therefore, that they their worship. Or even, like I said, the man of God is ministering the Word of God. He must also be in the Word of God. Therefore, yes. that yokes can be broken. That's right. You know, it's like it's like they have become ineffective. You know, there's yes. there's no there's no transformation that's taking place in the church. Right, right. No transformation. We, but we, and and that's what that's truly what Christ desires for all us to be is be transformed into transformed. His likeness, into His image. Yes, yes. But, Amen. But with no. But like you said, with so much what we call modern day sensationalism in the church now, yes, or yes. emotionalism, yes. those are the things that's kind of taken over now because people are in there just to get a, get aroused in their emotions. Yes. Therefore, as soon, soon as they drive down the street, all of a sudden, guess what? Because there was no word, there was no seed, there was no word they, to give that was given to them, even yes. though the Bible clearly tells us in Psalm, it said the word sin. The Lord sends the words to heal and deliver in a time of trouble. Yes. It didn't say, I, it, he said heal and deliver. It doesn't say that to just get you revved up for the moment. It said he yes. can deliver you with a word. Yes. Amen. That's the biggest difference because there's no word going yes. forth. Yes. Yes. And then you there's have. no word. That's right. And then you have people running to and fro to get a, a prophetic word. You know, you have prophets and I'm just going to, yes, Lord, I'll say it. You have prophets that are so full of pride and, and that you have the prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, who is coming to seek profit from the people, P-R-O-F-I-T. And you got <laughs> people that, you know, they can give words of knowledge that deal with the things of the world. They come and prophesy and say, oh, I saw you in a new house. I saw you in a new car. I saw you, you know, getting married. And this person is your husband, this, that, and the other. And they, you, they, they're they prophesying to promote people to give to their ministries. And they're also operating in the spirit of pride because the underlying motive is what they can gain at that time when they're given that word and they and and it's you know it's sad to see that you know people are running because they they're looking for a word when they're not running to the word themselves and seeking the word for themselves and and listening on their own to what the lord has to say to them themselves they're looking for a man to give them a word now i'm not just i'm not saying that there are no you know there aren't any prophets that hear from god but there are prophets that has taken this thing, you know, because they're walking in pride, they have taken this and they see it as a money-making opportunity in the church. And they know that there are people in the church that, you know, are hungry for a word. Right, right. Well, I think the biggest difference, like you said, is the, those type of prophets, they have come to a place where they're pimping their gift. There you rather go. Rather than using their gift. That's it. That's it. I got yeah, a message on that, gift, too. Using their gift to make a difference. See, there's a huge, that's a difference in itself. 
Yes. The biggest difference is they're using it to make a difference for their pockets rather than using it to make a difference in a life. Yes, yes, absolutely you know, correct, and, yes. And, and and even with that, what they're doing, even as they, they go forth with a word, it ain't even that they're giving a prophetic word, what they're doing, and we we say it in a humorous way, we always say they're prophet lying. That's right. Or giving a pathetic word. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, pathetic, you know? exactly. It's like they're 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 trying to they know the person has an itchy ear. So yes. all of a sudden guess what that itchy ear is getting them really hope because yes. of this lie that that's being told to them. Yes, 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 that's right. You know what? You got uh people in the body of Christ, um you know, uh, casting out devils doing you know miracles performing miracles signs and wonders but the lord says they're doing it and and they, and there's people that who people whose hearts might not even be right with god are able to still do these things but the lord says in matthew 7 22 and 23 he says the it says lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name have we done many wonderful works? And then will I pro profess unto them. This is the Lord speaking. He said, I never knew you. Depart right. from me, ye workers of iniquity. Pro that's, that's why I believe, that's why I'm one who believes per, that, that you have to come to a place in your in having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God where the Bible clearly says, study to show yourself approved, study a workman you, rightly dividing it. the word of truth. Yeah. Therefore, when you hear a prophet or even a word going forth, you I believe that God confirms it. He uses that person to that's confirm it. a word to you. Yes. The Bible clearly, and it ain't just, if you don't even re receive it at that time, I believe that God will confirm it because the Bible clearly says in Deuteronomy, but we also see Paul talked about it in Corinthians where he said the word of God, the, the word of God is confirmed by about one or two or more witnesses. Yes. So I, I just believe any time I'm in an atmosphere where I see the see the prophetic interaction, because I do believe that the prophetic is something that God does use. I'm one who believes wholeheartedly in signs, miracles, and wonders because I know it. Yes. I've seen it. I know it. I believe yes. what I tell you when I know it. Yes. But but like you said, I just believe that those who go with that itch ear, I think we as the body, we have to be more aware of what's going forth at times. I believe that we have to be in communion with God and have our own personal relationships with God. We have to spend time in the word of God. Yes. You know, yes. I always get back to spending time with God one-on-one, -on -one, no matter it. who, who, I don't care who's your pastor. I don't care who's your prophet, who the prophet is. I just believe that if you have a relationship with God, all they're going to do is confirm everything that God already told you. That's it. That's it. Bottom line. Bottom line. Bottom line, that, that I tell you that the spirit of pride has caused uh, the downfall of a lot of leaders. That the spirit of pride, you know, and we know God's God word. God's word says that you know, pride before a fall, humility before that's honor. Good. You know, that's His word. You know, so it, we have to be conscious, or you know, ask God. To, Lord, show me areas in my heart. Is there the spirit of pride? Lord, show me areas in me that may be exhibiting, you know, a prideful attitude or prideful behavior. And I, trust me, God will show you. He will show you because he showed me. And and it's not always pretty. It wasn't pretty with me. And, and I, I said, Lord, that's really in me? And he began to show me some things about myself, you know. And um, I, like I said, he began to strip me. And even now to this day, you know, even me teaching on this and what he's given me, um, I, I, it's keeping me, you know, in a place of humility. You know, And even when he began to show me some of the manifestations of pride, when I was teaching last week, I, I saw my, I, I can honestly say I did see myself in a couple of those things and I had to go and repent and ask the Lord, you know, to deliver me and forgive me for having, you know, some of those characteristics or, or manifestations where I allowed the spirit of pride to come into, you know, into my heart. And uh, one thing about me, uh, you know, I, I want to remain humble before the Lord. 
I want to re- I want to I want to be clothed and I desire to be clothed with that spirit of humility. You know, and and, and that's that's how it's Christ like. It's Christ like, you know? Amen. Amen. You know, I always say one thing I know about pride, I always say it this way. Pride is the only disease, disease known to man that makes everyone rich except for the one that, who walks in pride. Wow. Wow. It, it's, it's such a danger for that person yes. who walks in pride. I mean, yes. like I said, hi, my name is David Laster. I know what pride looks like. Yes. I lived it. For yes. 33 years, so I know yes. <laughs> what pride looks like. <laughs> but 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 but, but I, I just I just see it and, and it really hurts you because when we it think does. about the consequences of pride, I always mm-hmm. said this way. The consequences of pride, because the Bible says we know pride goes pride goes before destruction, yes. before the fall. Mm-hmm. So we know that's one of the consequences of pride. Yes. The other consequence we gotta understand that it it'll put you, put us in a in a dangerous place with God. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because the Bible, the Bible says the Lord detests the proud of heart. Yes, yes. In Proverbs sixteen five. Yes. You know, then I, I, I just then we got to understand when we walk in pride, pride. We got to understand that pride brings disgrace yes, upon that person. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Then, then another consequence is that, that I've I've learned in my own personal experience is that pride co- brings conflict all the time. All because you want to know, wow. you want to be the one right all the time. Guess what? You're going to have more arguments than anything, yes. anybody in the world. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Wow. You know, I, I just believe we have to come to a place where we realize, is this Christ-like? Is this what we want to be known as? Exactly. Yes. I agree. You know, Amen. We, you know, our lives are supposed to be a, it ain't all about preaching a sermon. It's about being a sermon. Being a sermon. As we walk. Yes. Every day, every day in our life as men and women of God. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, we all struggle somewhere at some point with pride in our lives. Uh, but the sad thing is, or the sad commentary is that some of some people don't realize the potential that awaits you if you just let go of pride and and be delivered from it you know there's a great potential that awaits you but as long as you're uh, embracing it and and holding on to it you never reach that potential because of the spirit of pride you know the sin of pride and you know like you said you know god he warns us in his word that he hates pride you know it's it's detestable to him And uh, one of the things that pride also will do between individuals, you know, when you have a person that's prideful, the Bible says that where pride is or where strife is, there's every evil work. So even with the pride, you know, there comes strife between individuals and, and then there's evil work behind it. So there's, you know, God hates it. He detests it. And, and we have to, you know, come to the realization and recognize when we're walking in that spirit, when, when you know, that, that spirit is upon us. We have to come to the realization and know when it's lurking, you know, because the Bible says the, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he'll use anything, you know, or anybody to do just that, to carry out his plan, you know, to bring destruction upon your life. And pride is one of the ways or one of the things that he uses to, for the destruction and the downfall of man. That's right. Amen. 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 I I, I always just say it this way. I, I, when it, I understand pride and like, I go back to where you was at earlier when you talked about how, how pride really keeps us from seeing the fullness that God has for our life. Yes, yes. You know, and 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 I, I say it this way: I say, why settle for less when I can have God's best? That's it. That's it. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and the good thing about it, great thing about it, God. What I love about God, even when you walk in pride, and, and God bring, God will restore you when you yes. come to the come back to your right mind. Exactly. You know, you can. 
you know, for those for those who may be listening, I I just say to you, like like my sister Tammy said tonight, you know, it's, we have to come to a place where we realize we're walking in that spirit of pride, repent of that spirit of pride, and watch God do a wonder in your life. Amen. 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 You know, in in Isaiah uh, two chapter two verse twelve, the Lord says, "The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the pride and lofty, for all that is exalted. He has a day in store for them, and He says, all those that are proud, proud and lofty, they will be humble. They will be humble. So." That I went through that, and I I can't yeah. help reiterating it how I was prideful and God humbled me. I had my day, I had my season of stripping of of the spirit of pride, and He humbled me. He humbled me through that process. So, like I said, you know, it, it's something that. A prideful person doesn't realize sometimes that they're prideful. And then sometimes they do. They know they are, but they refuse to admit that they are. And they know that they're prideful. But you must know if you, if, if you are one of those and you know that you are walking in pride and you, that you know you are bound with that spirit, first of all, pride is a sin. It is a sin. And it is detestable to God. And if you know that you are walking in that, I, I urge you, and, and I say that it is imperative that you repent of the sin of pride. You, if you don't, a destruction awaits you. A downfall awaits you. Repent today. Repent today of it. Go to the Lord. Don't be too proud. Don't, you know, to admit that, hey, I've been prideful. Lord, the, go to the Lord. He says that we can, and we can approach his throne of grace at any time, any time of need that we have. God says that we can Amen. approach him. He's, a, he's an approachable God. He's not a God that, you know, uh, waves his finger, uh, points his finger at you and points out, you know, what you've done. He's an approachable God. He's a loving God. And all he yes. wants us to do is come before him. Come before the throne of grace. Come before the throne of God. Lay yourself out before him and say, God, I repent. Whether it's the uh, sin of pride, the sin of lust, or whatever type of sin it is. He says, come. To the throne of grace in your time of need, your time of help, your time of trouble. He's an approachable God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. He says, I am a God that loveth thee. My love is unconditional. I do not hold things towards you. I do not hold things against you for I am a loving God. Did I not give my only begotten son so that you may yes. live, says the Lord. Come to me, says the Lord. Come to me on tonight. Come before me, says the Lord. I am waiting. I am waiting. I am waiting, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. You don't have to be ashamed. Whoever is listening, you do not have to be ashamed of walking in the spirit of pride. See, that's what the devil wants you. He wants you to be ashamed. The Lord says, come. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. You know, Thank hallelujah. You, you know, that's what first John one and nine is all about. When he said, if you confess your sins. Yes. He is faithful. He will forgive you, but he's faithful and just to yes. cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Cleanse you. Hallelujah. That sounds like a loving God to me. That glory. doesn't sound like a God that, that wants to see oh, you glory. walk in despair. Amen. That's a God that wants to see you walk in plenty. Amen. Amen. Well, our time is up on tonight. Hallelujah. I could keep going because I just feel the presence of the Lord and the, the prophetic Hallelujah. on me. But I'm going to submit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. I, I hope all that were listening were blessed by tonight and what God brought forth out of myself and my brother David. Um, next week um, will be on God's amazing love. I want you all to tune yeah. in next week 
and the subject is going to be God's amazing love. And I'm going to talk about even after all this, he still loves us. Amen. God bless Amen. you all. Thank you, David, for being on the show again. Um, it won't be the last time. I'm letting you know now. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you. I love you. And until next all time, right. God bless you all. Love you. Love you too. God bless you.